previously on Two Past Midnight. Harrison, I believe these men are for real. Would you like me to speak with him, Captain Emmett? Yeah, you 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 best ought to get out with me here. Emmett's going to climb out of the back. We are going to Krakow. We hear free city there, yeah? We need to search your truck. Why don't we handle this like men? If you need something from us, let us give it to you so we can be moving along. I will know what we need from you when we search your truck. All right, so you're all are walking along. And the truck's going behind you. You see along the side of the road a helmet pop up out of the grass and drop back down. Ended last time, you all remember? You guys were being uh, escorted down to Krakow in front of Mr. Jankowski's pickup truck, but it's full of Soviets and a paralyzed major, and or a unable to move, you know, uh, major who doesn't like and to be called little lady. <laughs> no, well, why would she? I mean. I don't know. I imagine she wouldn't. <laughs> I would be upset by that, too, so I yeah. get it. I, it makes me feel petite, so. Or a little boy. <laughs> if somebody was like, how you doing there, little boy? It'd be like, yeah, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so you guys were being escorted down the road towards Krakow. And we ha- we've, we've been stripped of all weapons or just Russian weapons? That was the next point. My apologies. No, no, that's fine. It's fine that you brought it up because that man, other people were thinking of this. So what we know is the one, the saw is on the pintle. Two, the 240 is disassembled in the front seat. Three, the 50 cal, which was discussed. Can I have my rifle? We'll give it to you when we get there is in the truck. We never really specified what weapons they let you keep and what they didn't. Like, I didn't specify, which is a little bit of a failing on my part as referee. So, how we're going to handle this, because it's much more interesting. Is by rolling dice. No, no. That would be Jeremy's solution to it. I'm going to let you guys decide on the rest of your weapons. Okay, we'll start with Gordon. I started with a AK, an M9, and my club. Mm Mm-hmm. They would have probably taken the AK because it's Russian and they were interested in those pieces. Yep. They probably would have left me with the garbage sidearm, but I don't know for sure. And the club, it depends on if one of them took a liking to it. Even the Soviets hate the M9. Mm. Uh, (laughs) The club, I'm going to say... I'm going to give you the option on the club. Somebody might have noticed that that was an Olympic thing. <laughs> they might have, but it was also a thing he was, like, carrying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you had it on you. It wasn't so much a thing that was in the truck. Correct. So I'd be more... So that's what I'm saying. Like, I never specified how much, like, them taking guns off of you guys and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was going to kind of let you guys decide. I'm going to say I have an M9 in a club, no AK. Okay, sounds good. Chris? I was just looking to make sure. Um, for Harrison, I would say he... I'm not going to metagame this. I'm going to say he wouldn't have his M16. Because he was driving, I'm going to say that's, like, behind his head. You know, like, almost like a gun rack in the back behind his yep. head. I grew up in Pennsylvania. I get it. Um, <laughs> Pennsylvania and Ohio. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah, Murph obviously doesn't have his sniper rifle. Um, mm-hmm. I would say he absolutely has his combat knife because that would be like sheathed. Um, the M9, maybe? I mean, I'm assuming he's got that across his chest. And I don't think he cared to. It's whether they took it from him or not because I don't think he cared to offer it up or if they took it, he wouldn't have given a fuck either way. Well, well that's what I'm saying is I never specified that they did take those things. Yeah, Nor I would, did I really decide, like, internally, so I'm just saying I'm leaving it to you guys on if you think they would have taken these things or not. I'm letting you guys decide at this point what the NPCs would have done. I don't think so. I don't think they gave a shit about our small arms. Well, not sp- pistol-type things. They wanted their their Russian weapons, and 
I don't know. I would because a dude with a pistol when he's surrounded by twelve guys with AKs is probably not going to do anything. Tell that to John Wick. Hey, yeah, tell that to John Wick. <laughs> oh my God, it's Jason Bourne. <laughs> Turned off. Olaf was his dog. But I'm I'm completely I'm completely open to suggestion that they would have taken the M9. Yeah, you got well, it. See, that's you. why I'm saying it's up to the party, to the all of y'all. And if you want to decide individually what you think, that's fine. But it was kind of more of like a party vote is what I was thinking. Like, what do you as a group think the Soviets did? I think egotistically they'd have just taken rifles. That The whole scenario seems like they weren't going to search us, but they were going to take our shit as far as like the Russian stuff and then the vehicle. And then we were, we had conversation with them. They knew they had us outgunned at that point and we knew they had us outgunned and we weren't making any moves. So I don't think they would have a reason to strip us of everything, everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, me and the uh, leader had kind of like a, you know what I mean? Eye to eye, man to man kind of thing. So it seemed like it was kind of, Hey, we're going to take our stuff that you guys have acquired and y'all can keep what stuff you had prior to. So, right. Okay. But as far as Emmett goes, I mean, so like the dragon offs, like I said, yeah, as far as Emmett goes, the, the Saul's still up on the pental. So mm-hmm. Emmett's, Emmett's just hanging out with his, his cock in the breeze and, uh, probably half of a, set of shears kind of tucked tucked in his back of his shirt there those shears <laughs> and I, I would say the snake blade Murph definitely doesn't look threatening because he's all in his own head and kicking mm-hmm, rocks mm-hmm. okay Mr. Jankowski has a service revolver tucked into his trousers because he doesn't actually have a holster for it it's just kind of there and He's got it in his belt. Okay. That sounds about right. Okay. So that answers that one question. Um, so let me move on to the rest of this. So you guys were going along. The marching order was Harrison and Mr. Jankowski were in the front. To your left, i.e. the south, because you're headed southwest, is a couple of the Soviet soldiers, right? Um, Behind you, about 10 meters back, is Gordon. And yet again, to his south, is another couple Soviet soldiers. Behind that, another 10 meters, is where Emmett and Murph are, and they were talking. And that was when Murph saw the the helmet pop up, and like he just noticed it. And behind you two is another, like, four Soviet soldiers on either side of the road, and behind that is the pickup truck with four more Soviets and the Major Gibson. And Murph, you see, as I said, that helmet pop up. At, like, kind of in, like, a wooded area, you kind of see it pop up out of, like, some high grass and then, you know, pop back down. You're coming up on a tree line. To your right are a bunch of trees. Not a bunch, but there's, like, a tree line that you know, like 20, 30 meters off the road. But up ahead a little ways, about another 50 to 60 meters from the front of the group, it opens up on the right-hand side into a large... You can kind of see that it opens up there into a larger area. So from your vantage point, it kind of appears like there's an ambush set up ahead. What do you do with that information, Murphy? After Murph notices it, it kind of snaps him out of his, um, I don't know, is it a depressive state? Because it, like all of a sudden it's like a little hope, he, a notice uh, that there's what he thinks are friendlies, which may or may not be the case. Mm-hmm. And he, because him and Emmett were talking kind of, you know, just to each other at low voice. And he's like, be on your toes. I think it's going to get frosty. The hell are you talking about? We got friendlies around us. 
What are you seeing? Where? As Emmett's just kind of like scanning around. Don't make it obvious. I saw Kevlar. We're coming up to a good ambush point. How do we keep our people out of the crossfire? Oh, oh. <laughs> Is that a wood pigeon? I- <laughs> who did the wood pigeon sound? <laughs> I missed who it was. Murph. Okay. <laughs> Does Murph actually do a wood pigeon sound? Yes. <laughs> oh, shit. Most of these guys aren't going to get it. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> so from the trees, you hear the common wood pigeons. <laughs> and you see a bird fly off. <laughs> Harrison, you see, that is actually common wood pigeon. It's a very common bird in Poland. We had many in Bourne. I, I, I think we've been seeing them all over the place since we've been here. They're common. That is why they call them common, huh? Yeah, I, I know you're just messing with me. So let me ask you, Chris, what, and, and Emmett, what exactly, now that Emmett knows, what is your guys' intention? What is your plan? Murph's plan is just to keep walking and act like nothing out of... Nothing has changed. Nothing out of the ordinary. He's just now on okay. alert. Okay. Yeah, for uh, Emmett, it's the same thing. Just scanning the horizon line and... Uh, uh, basically trying to let this... Uh, group that's got us up a creek without a paddle kind of walk right into them. Right. I mean, okay, let me do this. Let me move you guys over to the map so you can see it too. Because I feel like if we try to alert our other guys or like bunch, get ourselves bunched together, it's going to be too obvious. Right. So like, this is what we're looking at right now. As you can see on the right-hand side is where it starts to open up on the northwest of the road and kind of opens up into a larger area. And it's along those trees, both on this first part you was where you first saw that head pop up. And then to the south is another end. And you can, now that you're looking around with both of you, you actually can pick out a couple guys. You're like, there's one, there's one, there's one. And to your count, you would count you know, plus or minus of a dozen, basically. <laughs> oh, it's about to get good. <laughs> so what's the over-under on who dies and who lives? <laughs> it's about to get nasty. <laughs> Every time I've suggested we take bets, it's me. So I'm going to sit this one out. Right, but you're not Emmett's buddy either right now, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, with y'all's training, Jeremy, I know Stan doesn't necessarily know this, but Jeremiah. Sir. With your training, where would you think they all would assume the kill box would be? Oh, it is... Let me measure this. It's, uh... It's gonna be... 130 meters, give or take? Yep, that's about yep. right. Yep, <laughs> yep. Right in the middle of that conic section yep. where you can focus all your fire right into the middle of that convoy. Yep. That yep. is the kill box. Yep. So that's why I wanted to like okay, yeah. show you guys the map at this point so you could see it. So uh so what's your plan? Under his breath, you know, the same way that we were talking slowly, he's like You see over there, over there, and over there as we keep walking. Okay. And Gordon still knows nothing. Wait until we get into the kill box and then stop and say, hold up. Emmett will, um, seeing as how the the way we're kind of marching with the rest of the group, Emmett will, mm, what would that be? Basically, Emmett wants to try and tell the uh, other three to kind of get their hands on their head <clears throat> kind of kind of make it look a little more obvious that we are captives mm-hmm. 
So I'll just say out loud to the rest of the group, I would just say, hey, uh, hands on your head. And Emmett will take and put his hands up um, and not say another word and just keep walking. <laughs> okay. Stanislav stops. Okay. And turns around to look at him. All the rest of the Soviets kind of stop. And then the guy that's like to the south of you is like, why are you putting hands on your head? It's a, it's an American game. It's called uh, Emmett Says. Emmett Says, put your hands on your head. I'm just trying to pass time till we get to Krakow. Oh, is is like is like Simon says, but you did not say Emmett says the first time. Right, so if you did it then you you lost. Stanislav turns around and keeps walking. Without putting his hands on his head. Emmett, roll persuasion. And in my head I'm gonna assume the fiction Emmett said something smarter than this. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on the dice roll. Yeah. It depends on the die roll. Yeah. All right. I'm offended by that. <laughs> so much so much for waiting the kill box. Uh, <laughs> la- ladies and gentlemen at home, this is how I'm gonna handle this. I'm there are times where I assume the character is smarter than the player. We're about to find out. <laughs> All right, so that's a that's, that's a C and a C, so that is two uh, D eight, correct? Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's a seven of four. One success. One success. So you uh, you hear the guys behind you, um, the one in the south of you. I mean, you hear the, the guy that the ones in the south of you is like starting to talk to the other guy in Russian, and they're saying something. Uh. And you all keep fucking walking. So it seems like they believed you, I guess. You guys are about... Uh, how far away from that, quote, kill box are we now, Jeremy? Uh, Give or take about 100 meters. Sounds about right. Real subtle, Emmett. 75? Yeah. And uh, so you're all walking and the truck's going behind you. You just hear footsteps on the road and the tires crunching on the road. And there's going to have to be a roll with this. Um, <laughs> do I ever do I ever end up seeing anything or am I just clueless? <laughs> ah. Roll recon. Nope, clueless. Murph says to Emmett again, when we get even with those with that copse of trees, stop. Yeah, this is brush to the um north. That's that's brush, not trees. So that does not obstruct view. I'm just letting you know. But okay. that's what you're referring to. Yes, yes. When when we get even with that, stop. Alright, so no one else notices. You guys keep walking. You guys are going along. Uh, anybody else talking about anything as we're going? Stanislav has actually been reading to Harrison from the Polish crime novel Aww. and translating the whole time. So he's like, Harrison, this part, you know, and he's speaking in Polish. And then he goes, and this part is actually pretty graphic. He He's with a woman. You don't, I'm, I'm not going to translate that for you. <laughs> he's, he's with woman. He's... I'm not going to translate this part. This is kind of risky, you know? Are they, th- they going to do the nasty? He's, yeah, he's, he seems, he's, he's very graphic, yeah. But the rest of story is, is much better. We, we go on to the next page. See, he's here in office. It says here he is in office with a client. And he's just reading from the book at that point. I never worked in no office. That, that's for rich people. This man is not rich, though. You know, he's... he's uh, of the people. My daddy always said that them, uh, them office people just make decisions that cost us money. Well, that is bank. Yeah, it's different. It's, well, somewhat similar. Oh, ow. Emmett says, lie on your belly! <laughs> 
Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. We'd have no time to lie on belly. We need to go. All of a sudden, from the tree line... <laughs> and, uh... We're gonna start this shit. So... In the, uh, section of ambushes, this is how initiative works. The ambush actually gets the cards first. So... You guys noticed them. So I'm going to allow you guys to also be in the initiative order. Just not these other dudes. So they'll be last to go. The Soviets, basically. Uh, those that noticed it, which would be Emmett and Murph. And that's it. You got, you'll you get to act while they're acting. <laughs> if that makes sense. This made it way more complicated. Um, Emmett. You're up first. You yell that, and then dive on your belly. That's right. Emmett dro dro drops pro. All right. All right. I would count that as free actions. So you still have both your actions. Well, I mean, I'm not doing anything from the prone position with no weapon, so that's my turn. Okay. All right. NPC odds go up next. So that's going to be... These guys. 100 meters. Oof. So you hear from the north end of the road, one of those ones was shooting. You see the Soviet that was on the saw in the truck. A poof, takes a round. So he's down. Because that's the smart move. And I got to go to the other odds. Get him. Then northwest of you, you hear some... Uh, some more rounds going off. Woof. <laughs> uh, okay. And one of the dudes right behind you, Emmett, drops. To behind you into the north. On the north side of the road. Next in the initiative order. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da so shit. NPC evens. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that fits because they were setting up the ambush. Yeah, it, it does. It does. But you noticed them, which means you wouldn't have been applicable in the ambush. So the rule, the way the rules work with the ambush is if it's successful, they automatically get the highest cards. But you guys noticed them, but the Soviets didn't. So anyone who wouldn't have noticed them, I'm... But, like, I'm just saying, like, I know it's simultaneous, but I feel like... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep going, Chris. All right, so this guy to the south, number four, from that last guy whose round I just did, he shoots and he takes out one of the guys in that group in the front, down just south of you, Harrison and Stanislav. I wasn't trying to be rude, Chris. I just wanted to keep going. There's a lot of shit going on. And then to the north of y'all, there's these two other groups that have yet to shoot. He's going to shoot that one. Right behind you again, Emmett, that one guy that's left. Shit, that last dude in that group's gone. Boop. And then that other one takes another shot. Depends on hit location. He's gone. The other guy in the back of the truck gets taken out. Well, that's all of them. So they've all shot off. So the only other person who could act would be Murph. So, yeah, we're going to say Murph goes next then. So before they opened fire, Murph was inching his hand up towards his chest where, his, where the M9 is. Mm -hmm. Once the bullets start flying, he drops prone to the ground and is going to shoot the closest guard to him, which is probably going to be the one right southeast of us. About 20 meters off. Yep. Yep. There's two guys there, by the way. That's what that plus one means. Yep, I get it. But he's only going to okay. fire at one. Gotcha. I just wanted to make sure we were all in the same head cannon was all. Yep. I think he's going to try to double tap that dude so, so does that mean ammo dies <laughs> well, how does that work with a pistol I'm trying to you remember. can roll one ammo die with yeah. it I believe isn't it it's the number of ammo die you can roll is based off the rate of fire of the weapon so yeah. whatever the rate of fire is that's how many ammo die you can use and then whatever you roll on the ammo dies how many rounds were fired plus one rate of fire is two so you, you could theoretically roll two ammo dies but you could also empty, if you roll high enough, you'll empty your magazine on him. Yeah, I'm going to just roll one. Ammo die. Okay. Two successes. Oh, shit. And, um, and an ammo die. All right, roll me a hit location. 
three. All right, so that's a chest shot. These Soviets don't wear flak jackets, so you are fortunate. You you pop 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 take out one of those. You so that's six rounds. So you empty six rounds seven. of this dude's fucking uh, seven rounds. Sorry, seven rounds in this dude's chest, and that guy is fucking gone. Um, sh- shoot, you didn't have your weapon drawn. You should take a negative one for that. You know, whatever. I don't care. I'm going to keep moving. Um, Yeah, because you didn't have your weapon out, you'd have to draw it. So then you wouldn't be able to use your fast action to quick aim. And it would have had to been a like or fast aim. It'd been a quick shot. So you technically should have taken a minus. And I should have thought of that beforehand. So I'm going to keep going. Um, But for those people that love rules, we did it wrong. All right. (sighs) So NPC odds get to go. The red odds. So... Oh, shit. Um, that's one, two, three. That's these three units that are left to the south of you. All right, so the dude that's right beside you, Murph, that you just took out his buddy is going to shoot back at you. So here we go. Or maybe I'll do that one last. I'm going to do that one last. Uh, the guy to the front starts shooting to the dude to the furthest to the south of the tree line at the very end. That's who he's going to drop prone and shoot at that guy. Oh, shit. Okay. So you see some rounds hit the tree over there and like in front of him. I should have been more specific. Those guys behind trees. Sorry. Because why wouldn't they be taking cover behind trees? The guy behind Murph, the two dudes behind Murph and Emmett are going to. Well, one, they're going to drop prone. And they're going to shoot at the tree. Uh, one of the groups in the trees in the center there. That's who they're aiming at. So one of the, you see her, and they take out one of these dudes in the trees. It actually kind of makes sense because those rounds came in first. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it all, as far as combat goes, is happening very simultaneously. So their first assumption was definitely contact right. Now I'm going to deal with number five, who is right beside the dude that you just shot, so he is going to straight up shoot at you, Chris. That makes sense, too. That makes sense. I'm going to roll out in the chat. That's what I'm going to do. I am prone. All right. So soldiers. That'll be a minus one on this. There we go. So one success. Um, roll me d6. Bra, bra, bra. Headshot. <laughs> you got a helmet on, so that reduces the damage by one. So it pings off your helmet, and you take one point of damage. Okay. And we're going to keep moving in the initiative order. Stan, you're up. Stanislav is going to slap Harrison on the shoulder as he runs past him and says, Harrison, follow me. And he's going to run southeast towards the riverbank to try to get cover at the river. All right. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention. For the audience at home, there is a river to the south of them. So he's going to do one, two, and then roll mobility. That is just a green blob. Is that, is it brush? What is that? The green, uh, yeah, that's like brush, so... Okay, so it's no negative modifier, straight mobility, no success. He failed it anyways. So it was one, two, and then he goes another two, and now he's going to roll another mobility, which, am I on field or am I on shrubland? Uh, field. Okay, so another straight mobility, and he doesn't succeed, but he's running for the bank. Okay, sounds good. How far does that drop, by the way? Um, uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not like a cliff, but yeah, it goes down. So Okay, yeah, yeah it looks like a cliff, so I'm just yeah. trying to... I might make you roll mobility if you dive down it to not get hurt. <laughs> that's that's fine. All right. Um, Gordy, you're up. All right, so... Point of clarification. Yep. How, with a club, I would have to... Use an action to take it off my back and an action to swing it. 
Yes. Okay. Gordon will panic, pull out the M9, and fire at the guy shooting at Murph. Alrighty. Uh, he's prone, so you're going to take a negative one. Actually, he wasn't prone. I'm sorry. He's still standing because he was. You guys were close. And another negative one for uh, the quick yeah, shot. Yeah, I say I'm not necessarily aiming. Is that uni- yeah, it'll be negative one for the quick shot. It's only negative one for the quick shot. I never said he went prime. Okay. So. Uh, do I do ammo dice? Rate of fire two. Yeah, I'm going to say he kind of freaks out, so he's going to just go a little crazy. One success, one ammo die. Roll me a d6. Headshot. They do wear helmets. Ah. Um, what's the the M9? Is it uh, plus one for armor? Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So ping. So it hits his helmet. And uh, wait, that's not the right die. Uh, what about suppression for all these people? By the way, I'm literally rolling that for this guy right now. Most of the guys that have been shot are dead, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, all the guys that have been shot have pretty much been killed. <laughs> I don't remember. Do you have to take... Do you have to roll Kuno Center Fire for being shot? Yes. Chris never rolled Kuno Center Fire for being shot. He did not yet. I'm assuming I do it before my first... Before my next turn? You want me to do it now? No, you should have done it now, actually. You should totally have to do it now. And there's a reason why. Because stress mechanics? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. Oh, here we go. <gasps> <laughs> What'd you get, Chris? I got a one and a three. Yeah. So I know. Uh-huh. Now. You take a point of stress. Yo. And. Freak the fuck out. Empathy nope. roll. Y- yep. Which your empathy's garbage, so is that that's it's a straight D. D six, yep. <laughs> and that would be a two. <laughs> yep, yep. For the listeners at home, that means Murph is now on a uh violent rampage. Uh as per the rules. So We will play that. Yeah, when we get back around to Murph's turn, we'll uh we'll deal with that. Um Emmett already went in that first go round. Harrison hadn't gone yet. Harrison. Gordon will drop prone after he does his little firing tirade. Okay. He will use nine That's of fine. the 15 bullets currently in his mag, I believe, on that firing tirade. Woof. He's just like, pap, 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 yeah. pap, pap, then ping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's suppressed now. That's the other thing. That Soviet's suppressed. So so, so I, did, I did damage him and ping him, right? Because I got him a two shot. No. No. No, okay. No, because the damage on the weapon is one. Yeah. Right? Um, damage on the weapon is one. You got two successes. So I would have hit him for a total of two. Right, but the armor's plus one, so it treats his armor as one higher, which means it treats his armor as if it's two, gotcha. which means the damage that you did was completely negated by the armor. We don't know if it ablated or anything. I'm, you don't know. I'll, I rolled it. Okay. <laughs> We haven't inventoried that helmet yet. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just didn't know if I could like see it fly off his head or if I could see a gaping hole in it. Either way, oh, I yeah. jumped. Seeing as I'm literally a hex and a half. You shot an M9 at him. It did not do okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> the mechanic exists for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Harrison, you're up. Well, M- Miss Stan told me to, to, to run with him, so I, I'm going to follow him into that tree line or the bushes. So, move two, then mobility roll. Mm-hmm. The brush is about 50 meters to the south. One success. Mm-hmm. So that's one extra hex? He's going to get just past you and dive into the, the shrubs right there. Okay. Okay. So the shrubs that are just off the road, well, off the the little field next to the road. Mm-hmm. Come on, Miss Stan. Yep, yep. Hold on one second. I've got a pretty exciting roll to make, and I don't want to tell you guys what it is yet. Please don't be mortars. Please don't be mortars. 
Harrison's gonna hit a tripwire. Harrison's gonna hit a tripwire. Because that's the way. He, that's that's the ambush right there. You, you force him off the road into that direction, and then there's landmines or booby traps on that side. Son of a bitch. Man, if there's booby traps there, that's amazing. I, I, I like boobies, but I, I, I don't like no booby traps. They, they always seem to find me. Chris. <laughs> Roll me. This is the evil GM pause. A. Yeah, you don't have to grin so deeply as you say it. Hey, you can edit the pause in later. Just <laughs> do it. <laughs> uh... I'm I'm scrolling down to things. Roll me. Um, I'm, I'm looking for the F, your F rule. <laughs> I think that's on page uh, 142. I'm looking for the irradiated bear attack section. Roll me 2d8. What? Two and a two. All right, you hear? <gasps> Boom! You are prone. <laughs> Roll Colonus under fire. And you hear beep. Yeah, I mean, everybody hears boom. Okay, yeah, fail and a fail. Nothing and a nothing. And you're suppressed and you take a point of stress. As you set off an improvised explosive device. From the truck, you also hear And I'm going to keep going. I always find these damn traps. Beep. Hold on, this is fucking crazy. Okay, sorry, I got a lot of shit going on right now. <laughs> okay, all right, that's funny. And um, everybody would have had to draw their weapons except for the dudes that had set the ambush and had Overwatch, so they would not have been able to. Uh, I'm gonna say no one had Overwatch anywhere, including the Soviets. So I'm going to allow these dudes to do their Overwatch the apparently NATO soldiers from the tree line. So, this is not how I thought this was going to turn out at all. So here's some more gunshots coming from the trees, the tree lines here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Fucking nothing. Uh, and that dude that was prone and to the uh, furthest along on the front of the road, like directly south of where Harrison and Stanislav were, the front most Russian uh, is the last one's gone. All right, so the odd numbered Soviets get to go first or next. He's suppressed and he's not. So one of them is suppressed, but now he's no longer suppressed or he won't be on this next turn. And these ones behind you guys that are dropped prone are going to immediately surrender. Get up and move back behind the truck and take cover behind the truck. That's what they're going to do. And, but they're taking cover to the, oh shit, to the, and <laughs> there's not a good way to take cover. <laughs> They'll take cover to that direction, to the north. And this guy's no longer suppressed. Next card. Murph, you're up. Violent Rampage. He goes from being prone and just stands up. No. No fucking more. No. And walks towards the the guy that was next to the guy he shot, the guy that was prone and suppressed, and just yep. unloads the rest of his mag into the guy. All right. First of all, that is a fast action to stand up and then a fast action to move that will be all of your actions okay stands up and fires then I mean he's but no no um concern about his well being or taking cover or any of that shit he just keeps okay. yelling no alright that is a negative one for quick shot and a negative one because he's prone okie dokie it's a negative two so I've got eight rounds left in the mag. So I'm going to say that that's... You can still do both ammo die. Yeah, two ammo die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wait for you can roll as many ammo die as you have rounds left in your firearm. Plus one. 
Oh, is it below? It's, it's however many you can roll. So as like, long as you have three, you can go full bore. Right. Exactly. Yes. Correct. Nope. So two ammo die works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, he just stands up and he's like, no, no fucking more. No. And just unloads the whole mag into him. Mm-hmm. One success, one ammo die. All right, roll me a hit location. Two. That is a chest, and that dude is fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we're going to keep going. Harrison. Suppressed, was he? Yeah, Harrison was suppressed, so that would be his shit. Uh, the red NPC evens, there are absolutely none of them left. Um, Mr. Stanislav. Stanislav is going to move into the same hex as Harrison and drop prone next to him and do a medical aid. Wait, how many hexes away were you? I was one hex away. Roll 2d6. I forgot to have you roll that before. Ooh, yep. Okay. Yep, yep. A four and a four. Okay. Roll coolness under fire. Okay. Mm -hmm. No successes. You're actually prone one hex away either way. And you take one point of stress and you're suppressed. So now you're unsuppressed. Sorry, I forgot to do that before. I didn't think about it. But you don't take any damage, so that's cool. Um, (laughs) All right, this is pretty cool. So you guys hear some more shots come off from the the truck. And... <laughs> okay. You hear brr, 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 and you hear one of the Soviets standing beside the truck ah! and like drops dead to the ground. Um there's just one dude left. And you see an AK, like those of you that are looking that direction, I'm gonna say, just because it's cool, Emmett, you glance back and you see an AK sticking out of the bed of the truck and takes out one of the Soviets that was taking cover right behind it. Oh, what's your face is in the car in the in the truck? <laughs> Completely forgot. She's that. in the bed of the truck. Completely forgot that. <laughs> She's taken out like two or three at this point. That's awesome. I feel like I forgot she existed. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> yeah, Major Gibson's taken out a, a couple of Soviets at this point. Emmett. Uh Emmett will uh stand up as a fast action and then will uh, move one, two hexes towards the truck and make a mobility roll, which is C and a B. I got a eight and a seven, so the two successes. So I will make it to the bed of the truck to get back onto Psalms. That would actually be entering the vehicle, which is another fast action. You can make it into the same hex, but not into the truck. Okay. So even with two successes, that doesn't count as a nope. being nope. able to... Nope. Okay. Nope. Well, then I make it into the same hex as the truck. You are truck adjacent. Okay. All right. So you're in the same hex with the truck. Gordon. Yes. You're up. So Gordon will... While prone, you can move one, correct? Yes. And you can roll mil- mobility to roll to go one extra so hex. I will I will move down here simply just because Murph was kind of in the line of sight otherwise having his little f- bit of a fit I will do mm-hmm. a mobility to see if I'm going to go any farther the answer is holy crap I can go wherever I want to one more one more when you're when you're prone you can only so go I'll more. just pop right here and then without aiming I will relinquish the rest of my pistol on whom that last dude that's at the truck? That last dude, yeah. Okay. I will push. You can, but you don't re-roll that Correct. 12. Just only the, the 10 and the, the D6. 10. So that's a 1 on the D12. So that means your weapon's automatically going to lose one point of reliability. So you re-roll the D10 and one D6. And just one ammo die? Oh, yeah, I already yep. got one. Duh. Yep. <laughs> that oh, means no. your weapon jams. Oh, no. (laughs) I've been there. We've done this before, Kyle. But you want to hear something cool about it? What's that? That guy might be suppressed. Let me roll for him. He's not suppressed. (laughs) This is the gas station fight all over again. (laughs) You just hear uh, Gordon just screaming and yelling, Time to wait a pile of shit and stupid. Ah." All 
All right. I think everybody went. Yep. All right. Uh, I don't think those dudes have Overwatch on anything, so we're going to keep going anymore at this point. Harrison, you are no longer suppressed. What do you want to do? Did I lose one or two reliability on that? One. Oh, two. He's right. Two points of reliability and you and your weapon is jammed. Cool. Thank you. Harrison, you're up. Miss Stan, Miss Stan, you okay? Get get over here. Get over here. Get, get, get some cover. He doesn't have a weapon, so he can't fire. Stan, you're up. Stanislav is kind of dazed. And he he takes a big deep breath and he just stands up and just kind of stares at Harrison dumbfounded. We've all been there. Emmett, you're up. Uh, Emmett will uh, made it to the same hex as the truck, so Emmett will unarmed attack the last guy. All right. He's going to try to defend himself because he has yet to go this round. Okay. So he's going to try to block it. All right. That's fine, but that d- I don't take a negative for that, right? It's just opposed. Yep. All right. So I'm just making sure what dice I'm rolling. 2d12. All right. Here we go. Three successes. I got one. All right. So he is able to block your attack. All right, this is my turn. Okay. All right, so the odd-numbered blue NPCs are up now. Emmett, roll me percentile. Got a 90. Okay. All right, so this dude to the south starts taking shots at that dude behind the truck. He misses. Major Gibson is up again, and she is going to... uh, (laughs) Unload <laughs> that AK on that other dude again. Because, fuck it. Whew, Jesus Christ. So that dude that you just went up and punched, and that AK kind of points to the side a little bit, and like right at that dude just... Brrrah, opens up on him, and you see him fucking... Uh, he's got a helmet on, and it goes like up under his chin, and like rounds just fucking inside his helmet. He drops to the ground, and she shoots him in the face. And... We're out of combat. Are we? 